I'm a Padiddlemeister. Let's figure this out together, shall we? Alright, in order to learn how to padiddle, you're gonna need something basic like a tray. Now, it doesn't really matter if it's like a tray, like a cafeteria tray. I have a cafeteria tray right here. I actually borrowed this from one of my schools and um, told them I needed it in order to do this demonstration. If they're lucky, I might remember to return it. <laughs> uh, but you don't have to have that necessarily. Uh, here's another example. This is a lid as, uh, of a container. And then here's another one. This is a plastic top to a plastic file folder box. Doesn't really matter. What you'll notice that they all have in common here is not so much the shape. I mean, this is relatively speaking square. This is definitely rectangular. You can use a circular tray, doesn't matter. What you need to make sure of is that whatever you're going to learn with is of a uniform distribution of weight. And by that I mean, um, like for example, there's nothing that makes this side heavier than say this side. Same as the case with this. It's all basically sort of uh, the same thickness throughout. And there's not going to be any kind of weight issue that makes the thing spin oddly. So really almost anything will work. As you're beginning uh, to learn padiddling, I would not go for something massive, okay? Uh, I could certainly learn how to padiddle with this thing right here. Uh, it fits the category of being uniform in weight, but this thing is massive, so I would recommend finding something that is about the size of, say, a bedroom pillow. Alright, so you've got your object, whatever that might be. What you need to do next is find the center of that object. Now, Conveniently enough, when a lot of plastic products are made, for some reason the manufacturing process often kind of leaves a little divot in what would be the dead center. Here, I'll show you. If you look right here at this cafeteria tray, for example, let me get it close on that, you can see that the way they've manufactured this, it actually has lines that point to the very center right there. All right? If you look at the top of this little tray, that uh, I'm sorry, the little lid that's right there, you'll notice that right there, there is the center of this, which is convenient. Uh, and even on this one, I don't know if you can see it very well, but right here in the center of this lid, uh, right there, there is a little center dot, which is convenient. The reason I say that you want to find the center is because ultimately, when you try to get this little thing spinning, your finger needs to stay as close to the center as possible because that's the point at which everything is going to rotate. Okay? If you have chosen something that doesn't have one of those little convenient manufacturing spots, um, then all you have to do, like for example, if I were to use this, all you have to do is get yourself a ruler and draw a straight line from one corner to the opposite corner, get a pencil and draw it, do another line that goes from here to here, and then where those cross, that's the dead center. And if you don't have one of those little manufacturing oddities, one of those little dots, and it's very smooth, then where you have that intersection of lines, I would recommend getting like a small piece of, say, duct tape or something that you can put right there in the center. Because having that little tactile piece uh, that gives you information from your fingertip to the thing that you're trying to spin, that turns out to be really, really, really helpful. And if you have a piece of plastic, uh, and you don't mind sort of marking it up a little bit, what you can also do, besides putting a piece of tape, is get yourself like a little scissor and kind of gouge out the middle there. Once you get used to pediddling, you don't even need that little, that little sensory, I don't know, input. But in the beginning, it's really, really, really helpful. You've got your object, you found the center. You want to put your finger upright. Like, I mean, you want your finger to be perpendicular to the floor. 
not like this, not like this. You want it to be as upright as possible. And you want to place the object with that little sensory pinpoint there as much on the very tip of your finger as you can. Which is why I say don't twist your finger like this. Okay, We're trying to go for this. And you want to give it a nice sort of spin. And I'm now going to see how long it will sort of stay on the tip of my finger before it starts to wobble off. See, this is actually pretty nicely balanced. Ah, there we go. It's start to, starting to wobble off right now. Do you see that? Okay, that's going to happen. When it starts to slow down, that's when I find the object starts to wobble. In order to get it back up to uh, a, a decent speed that it will spin on its center point, you need to correct this motion by speeding up the spin. And when you do that, it will go from doing this to doing this, and then before you know it, it's back up to being a decent spin, and it will rotate on its own plane around the axis of your finger. Hopefully you don't do a whole lot of this. If you keep it sort of under control, you should do mainly small circles, ultimately, not these big like hand-waving motions. If you start to do this, you know something's gone wrong. You're gonna, when you start to spin, remember that you're going from the inside of your body out. So make that really clear, it moves like this. I push away from my body, then into my body, then out, okay? When the thing is spinning naturally, kind of just fine, I have my finger kind of straight up and down. But when it starts to slow down, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my finger and kind of move it more like this. So instead of being straight up and down like it is when everything is perfect, I take my finger and I put it more at make a, I don't know, maybe a 35, maybe 45 degree angle. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm trying to actually sort of use the, the pad of my finger to create more friction so that I can spin this thing around like so. So here it is, and I'm kind of using that to spin it. And if I do that enough, not a lot, but if I do that enough, I can actually coax this plastic piece into gaining speed. And then once that sort of gets a decent speed again, then I can try to move back to putting my finger upright and letting it rotate. And then as it starts to slow down and wobble, I'll take my finger again, I'll move it like so, and I'll crank it a couple of times and see if I can get it back to being fast. And then I'll let it coast on the very tip of my finger. So, so again, getting off balance. Use the pad of my finger, find the center. Getting off balance. Use the pad of my finger. That was a big time off balance. Back to the center. Use the pad of my finger. Back to the center. Use the pad of my finger. Back to the center. Use the pad of my finger. Oh, that's a big one. Well, that was a big correction there. Back to the center. All right, so that's the idea. If your finger is having to travel out here, like way outside, in order to spin that sucker back around, uh, it's going to be too late. So you want to you want to think about doing more of these movements sort of close to the center. All right, you know what? Honestly, it won't be long until you can do this without even thinking about it, without even having to look, because you'll get a sense of what kind of speed of the object is good. You'll get a sense of what it feels like for that sort of point on your finger to always be engaged. You'll get a sense of how to sort of spin that thing. And I've gotten to the point now where I can like walk around and, you know, hey, how you doing there? Hey, oh yeah, sure. Hey, all right. And it looks kind of cool to people that don't know what you're doing. They're like, how do you keep that thing going forever? Um, but it's really not that hard. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good luck. If you just start to learn how to padiddle, well then, part of me thinks that's kind of cool, and part of me thinks you need to go get a real hobby. Bye, everybody. Bam! Put it a leg. Let's do it. Padiddling! It's cool. Let's do it. Let's learn how to padiddle. Woohoo! Padiddling for dorks. Let's do it. Padiddling. Padiddling for real dorks. Let's do it. Padiddling. 
It's one of the dorkiest things you can learn how to do. So why not give it a try? Pudiddling! Let's do it! <laughs> Pudiddling! Pudiddling! It's one of the dorkiest things you can learn how to do. Pudiddling! Pudiddling! Let's learn it. Trigger now he's dead.